Hello, my name is Christina Kubo, and today I will be talking to you about toddlerhood and its relation to gender identity and the biology of gender development. Before continuing in this presentation, I'm just going to define a few terms for everyone so we can all be on the same page. The first one is gender identity. It is the awareness of oneself as male or female. So between the ages of 18 months and 30 months is when children first identify themselves as male or female. And by age two, um, they start to apply gender terms like boy and girl to others. The next term is sex. It is the biological status of being male or female. An example of this is that males are generally larger than females. And then the last term is gender. And it is the cultural categories of being male or female. An example of this is that girls tend to have longer hair than boys in many cultures. Gender identity can be a socially learned thing through different cultural expectations. Um, amongst many cultures, they treat boys and girls with differing gender expectations. They dress them differently, they play with them differently, and even talk to them differently. And really, anybody can be an influencer for this, um, but primarily in the earlier years, it's the parents who convey gender messages to children. Um, an example is that they give children names associated with gender difference. They provide gender specific toys based on fundamental cultural beliefs, um, but really even peers can be a huge influence whenever the children go to school later on or other adults that they encounter. Now to delve a little bit further into toys and their effect on gender identity. Um, here's an article titled Gender, Toys, and Learning. Um, in their literary review, research showed how children do not begin to understand that toys are gendered until several years later when they quickly learn that certain toys are for boys and for girls and that those boundaries best not be crossed. The focus of this study was to find educational aspects of children's toys and the potential influences toys have on their learning and future subject preferences. Um, several questions were created to help um, identify favorite toys and resources among young children. Um, the first is what content is specifically educational? Two is what broad activity subjects they address? And then three is what social discourses they perpetuate. The sample group chosen are three to five year olds. Um, and in this group, they're undergoing heightened periods of gender category maintenance. So they are increasingly understanding of the social importance of dif gender differentiation, and they seek ways to demonstrate their gender identification. They also begin to distinguish toys as gender. So in the methodology of this study, um, they sought to find the favorite toys of the toddlers. So they chose the three most popular toys and then two of the most popular DVDs. And then an example of these items were purchased and closely studied in order to apply the content and discourse analysis. Um, in their findings, they found how very different uh, the toys were. So the majority of these toys were very girl oriented or boy oriented um, for boys the the toys were stereotypically um, by action they they had construction and machinery and then girls theirs were stereotypically feminine so very nurturing toys such as baby dolls and then future studies for this particular article um, they would like to study uh, these kids like longitudinally. So whenever they grow up, they wanted to see if like these children chose a career um, that was associated with the toy that they played with when they were toddlers. Though culture and social influences have a huge impact on gender development, there is a biological foundation to such development. Often, but not always, sex underlies gender differences, and there are three elements to the biological origin of gender development. So the first is evolutionary. 
Different characteristics promote survival for each, the male and the female. An example of this would be that males who were aggressive, competitive, and dominant were more likely to reproduce as they could outfight others for scarce resources and consequentially provide them with more sexual access to females. Um, the second element is ethological. Ethology is the study of animal behavior. So just like humans, primates have distinctive functions for males and females. Males are more aggressive and competitive and dominant. Um, and then females are more nurturing and cooperative and hence they take care of children. And even the, the primate children played in same sex groups. And then thirdly is the hormonal element. So beginning prenatally, males and females have different hormonal balances. Females with more estrogens, males with more androgens. Um, an example of this would be girls with high levels of androgens are more likely than their cohorts to show male play behavior. And then likewise, boys with high levels of estrogens are more likely to show female play behaviors. Here is another article that delves not only into the, the social learning of gender identity, but also the biology of gender identity. And the article is titled, Gender and Patterns of Emotional Availability in Mother-Toddler and Father-Toddler Dyads. So in the literary review, they found that gender differences in emotional communication and affect regulation during early mother-child interactions that are consistent with later gender differences in relational behavior. Um, of course, they wanted to observe mother-child dyads, but in this particular study, they wanted to extend it to father-child dyads as this had not been done before. So in their methodology, they um, watched, they videotaped during quiet indoor play in a lab when toddlers were 19 months and 24 months. Um, the sample consisted of mother-toddler and father-toddler dyads from 113 different families. And then they used an emotional availability scale, which yielded scores for parent sensitivity, structuring, non-intrusiveness, and non-hostility, and for child responsiveness to and involvement of the parent. So in their findings, they found that more parental hostility is displayed in same sex than in cross sex dyads at 24 months. And then mother daughter dyads were looking a lot better than the father son dyads for this. And then mother daughter dyads displayed the highest, and father son dyads displayed the lowest scores for sensitivity. And then in future studies, a big question that researchers wanted to answer um, was that in the future, whether increased emotional availability on the part of the fathers could help moderate the impact of early gender differences in perception and attention on later gender differentiated relational behavior. And this concludes my presentation. Here are the works cited. If you are interested in looking at the articles that I reviewed in this presentation, you can go ahead, check it out. Get out now, get out now. I'm done.